you know, you're not really using the power of Excel unless you're writing formulas. And probably the biggest issue in writing formulas is to understand relative and absolute addressing. So that's what this segment is about. Okay, so I have a spreadsheet here. And what I'm going to do is start out by putting some data in. So I'll just put a number in cell A1. And now what I'm going to do, what I'd like is to have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, etc. down the first column. So let's start. And what I'm going to do is in the second element in A2, I'm going to put a formula. So I put equal sign. Now I could type A1, but it's easier to just click it. And I'm going to add a thousand. Now you have to push return um, or enter depending on your keyboard. And nothing's really happened until you do that. All right, there it is, 2,000. Now I'm going to copy this. And then I'll select, I'll select down here. And then I'm going to paste my formula. Okay, and there it is. So you can see I got what I said I wanted, which is adding a thousand each time. Now the interesting thing here is, let's take a look at these formulas. So remember, this is A1 plus a thousand, A2 plus a thousand, A3 plus a thousand, and if I go down here, A13 plus a thousand, and A40. So what happened? I, I made a formula here, a1 plus 1,000, and then I copied it into all these other cells, and it didn't stay the same. I didn't get A1 plus 1,000 in every cell. Instead, Excel uses used what's called relative addressing, and it interpreted the A1 here to mean the cell above the one that I'm putting the formula in. So in each case, like let's look at A4 here, it's got A3 plus 1,000, the cell above A4 plus 1,000. Same thing here. In A11, I've got A10 plus 1,000, the cell above. Now, that's what you usually want. So that's the default. That's what Excel does unless you make it do something different. It uses this relative addressing. And it just means that everything in the formula is relative to the position of the cell where you put the formula. So when I put A1 in this formula, what I was really saying was, use this cell directly above and add 1,000 to it. Okay, now if you haven't worked with formulas much, let's show you something else that's cool about them. I can change A1. So let's say I change it to this. And I'll push Enter. Wow, everything changed. Why? Because the formula didn't use a precise number for A1, it used the contents of A1. So here I got A1 plus 1,000, and then it propagates because each time I'm using that number plus 1,000. Okay, so let's turn this one back. And now I want to show you what happens when we copy to an, a different column. So what I'm going to do is come over here to column G, and I'll put a 50. And now what I'm going to do is copy this formula and paste it here. Now before I do that, think about it a minute. I said that what the A1 really means in the formula in cell A2 is to use the cell directly above. So when I paste it here, I should be using this cell directly above. And let's see if that happens. So I'll paste. Yes. And if you look at the formula, it's G1 plus 1,000 because cell G1 is directly above cell G2. And if I want to paste this all the way down, so I can do this and paste, you can see that the same thing is happening. And here, what I'm doing is adding the 1,000 every time to the 50. OK, now let's look at another way to do things. So what I'm going to do here is make a formula in column B, and I'll put equals this guy times, so that's the asterisk, 2, push return, or enter, and I got 2,000. Okay, so what I, my formula here says, take this cell to the left and multiply it by 2. 
So now think about what's going to happen when I paste this in. And you can see that each time I'm doing times two in the same row. Okay, so here I have eight, in B14, I have A14 times two. In B10, I have A10 times two, and so on. So again, it was relative, and in this case, it's the cell to the left. Now I think you can see the utility of this if I've got columns of data, so one kind of data in column A, one kind of data in column B, now, say in column C, I could add the first two columns. In fact, let's try that. So I'll do equals this guy plus this guy. All right. Add the two columns to the left. Let's copy and paste. And if you check each of these, you'll see you'll see that it is the sum of the two columns to the left. Not only that, but everything's propagated off A1. So if I change it, everything changes. But not here, of course, because this one doesn't involve A1. It only involves G. Okay, let's change this back. So play around and try different things. Um, so you're sure you know how this works. But let me pose a question. Suppose that instead of changing it, in other words, instead of using A1 the first time, A2 the next time, A3 the next time, I really wanted to use A1 every time. So let's make up a scenario where we might want to do this, and I'm going to start on a new sheet. So here's my idea. I want to put a 10 in here. And then I want to add 10 each time, so I'll put a 20 in here. So what I want in here is um, 20 plus 10, 30, and then I want to 40, and then 50, and then 60, by adding the contents of this guy each time. Uh, so what I want is to change the row, work up with the one above, but always add 10. So let me put a formula in here. So my first idea might be something like this. Uh, something like equals A1 plus A2. I'm going to push return. All right. So I've got this formula, and now what do you think will happen if I, happen if I copy this and paste it down? I think you can tell it's not going to be exactly what I want. And in fact, what's happening here? Well, of course, we're using relative addressing. So this one adds A2 and A3, this adds A3 and A4. So with relative addressing, each time I'm adding the value of the two cells directly above the one the formula is in. Okay, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted A1 plus the cell directly above. So let me show you how to do that. I'll come back to my original formula here. And instead of just A1, I'm going to have dollar sign A, dollar sign 1. Now what do those dollar signs do? They convert it to what's called an absolute address, which means we pin down the value, it's going to definitely be A1. And let me show you, we'll prove it by going ahead and copying this. Oh, so let me hit return first. Okay, um, now of course, these are all still the same because I haven't changed them yet, but now I'm going to copy and paste. Okay. And now you see the difference. I'm adding 10 each time. So here I have A1 plus A3, A1 plus A4. So I let this one change, but I kept the A1 fixed. So if I change A1 here, of course, everything will change. I can change it to a 5, let's say. Now I'm adding 5 to whatever was, is in here. So I can change this one too. Say so I change it to 100. Okay, now I'm adding 5. Starting with 100 and adding 5 each time. Alright, now let's try something a little different again. Suppose 
instead of doing this, I just, I pin everything down. So I put dollar sign on everything. Enter. Now, of course, this one doesn't change because I'm still using these two. And these haven't changed yet because I haven't copied the formula. So let me copy the formula. I'm going to paste it. See if you can think what's going to show up in here when I do this paste. Okay, they're all 105. Why? Because everything is pinned down. It's always a 1 plus a 2. And I could copy this formula any place onto the spreadsheet, like over here. Paste. And I've still got the same formula. Okay, so a relative address, you don't put the dollar sign. The absolute address, you do put the dollar sign. But there's an in-between position, too. So let's come back here. I'm going to erase this guy. And um, suppose over here I do this. First of all, I'm going to let the A2 be relative. And now with the A1, I'm going to keep the 1. Let's see. I think I'll keep the A, but not have the 1 be, um, have the 1 be variable. Oh, do I want to do that? No, I think I'll do it the other way. Actually, it's fun to try it both ways, but let's do this first. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to push return, and now copy this formula, and paste it. So you notice the formula doesn't automatically change until I do the paste. Okay. So what am I getting here? The 1 is fixed. Now, this A is relative. This is what I would call a semi-absolute formula. You can't tell as long as you're in column A. doesn't matter. But let's say I put it in another column. So let's put a couple of values here. Uh, let's say 2 and 11. And now I'm going to paste the formula in here. Oh, wait. doesn't seem to like that. I better copy it again. So copy... And now, paste. Yeah. Okay, so look at the formula. The E changed. The A changed to an E because that was variable. But the um, 1 stayed fixed. And you can tell that's the case by pasting down. So, sorry. Let's uh, go down to here and paste. All right. And you see here, the E changed, the 1 did not. Okay, let's try one more thing. I'm going to come over here. Let's do column C here. And I'm going to put a 4 and a, um, I don't know, a 10. And now here, I'm going to make this dollar A, but let the one vary. Okay. So, let's push return. Again, same value here because all these formulas come out the same on this particular square. Let's do a copy. And now, um, whoops, sorry. I'm going to paste I get it. All right, I'll just paste. Um, paste. For some reason I've got better fingers right now. Paste. Paste. Well, let's take a look. So you can see what's happening. It's keeping the A, but it's changing to three and four. All right, let's try pasting over here. Paste. And now I'm going to. You know what? I right-clicked, and I shouldn't have done that. Now I want to... All right, paste. Okay, see how it's keeping the A? It's adding this guy to this one. A2 to C3 to give me this. Let's paste here. A3 plus C4. Let's paste here. A4 plus C5, and so on. 
So depending on what you want to do, you can fix the row by just dollar sign on the row. You can fix the column by just dollar sign on the column. You can fix both of them by using two dollar signs like dollar a dollar one or whatever combination you want. And of course you can write a longer formula with more items in it and you can choose whether to use the dollar signs or not wherever you want. Now the best way to understand this is to go ahead and make yourself a spreadsheet, um, do some formulas, and start just playing around and, and use dollar signs and no dollar signs, relative and absolute addresses, uh, and see if you can predict what will happen. Try a few, try to get a certain effect and see if you can come up with a formula that will do it.